Y'all, crop dusting is a real thing. Why do you not think that I'm not going to figure out it was you? It was you and we all know it. It follows you. My husband knows this well. He tries to do it in his house or outside. He'll, he'll try to do the right thing. I'm like, honey, that's like a jet stream behind you. It is lethal. And it happened in the damn arcade every time I went. And then one time it happened and I walked up to my son and I was like, crop dusters. He goes, that was me. <laughs> I was like, what? At least he's honest. What's up? Welcome back to Making Better Grown Ups. I'm Leah. So glad to have you back listening or watching with us. It has been a great week. I hope that you have been thinking about last week's show about being abundant. Were you able to express your abundance in some way? Were you able to go out of your way and bless somebody or give above and beyond? I hope so. And if you are not on our newsletter, you guys, please consider joining the newsletter. You're going to be able to get inside info, extra info. We're going to give you tons of tips and practical stuff to put in action in your life. All you have to do is go to makingbettergrownups.com and subscribe to the newsletter. We hope that you will join us there. Also coming up today, we are going to talk about vacation with your family and surviving it. Yes, it is possible to do it in a healthy way. I can't wait to break it down with you. We have some really, really funny stories and some fun takeaways today. And like we talked about last week with being abundant, I'm hoping you're also in the abundant mood today because we would love for you to support us on Patreon. Patreon is a site that we have linked below for you to check out for makingbettergrownups.com. This is for individuals that come together every week, buying gear, upgrading stuff, trying to make the show the best possible for you and it's all happening on our own dime nobody's getting paid right now y'all so anything you can do to help further the mission of this podcast is much appreciated it's super simple just go to patreon below making better grown-ups and make the donation that comes from your heart we appreciate every penny and every giving that you can give to us oh man okay it is hotter than hades in here i feel like i'm at the freak of beach I'm here. I am dressed for the beach. I've got all my beach stuff and I'm going to just say it right now. Don't hate me. I am not a beach person. I am not a beach person, but yet I brought all this stuff to show you how I survived my family vacation. My first one with my parents and the beach. So welcome to the chaos of my life and all the lessons that I've learned over the last two weeks. And thank you for letting us have a bye week We needed a bye week last week because after a vacation, one of the biggest tips I can give you, bonus, give yourself a buffer day, two days, a week, whatever it is to get back into the swing of your life. You are not expected to jump back in gung-ho and just go for it, especially me. Hosting people in your house, needing to wash your clothes, do all the things that we're going to talk about, give yourself a buffer week. So thank you so much for giving me the time to take the time to take care of myself, wash my clothes, unpack, and remember how much I hate the beach. <laughs> So let's jump right on into how to survive a family vacation. Now, first of all, I just want to like tell you right now, part of being a grown up is learning how to vacation with other grown ups. Now, the first lesson of like my grown up life I can think of of being around other grown ups is when I was in mom groups, you know, the ones where you take your child to and you have to hang out with other moms and you're like grown upping with other moms and all they talk about is their children. That just made me hate hanging out with grown ups altogether. I was like, I don't want grown up friends. So all my friends never had kids at the same time and we never had anything in common as far as kids. So I was like, these friends are the ones I choose as my best friends because we are not gonna talk about our kids and compare them for the rest of our lives. <laughs> so when I moved to Jersey, that's what I thought grown up friends looked like. And I was like, Ugh, not so much. So I never thought about in my entire life, like, hey, let's get a bunch of grown up parents being my parents and let's go on a vacation together. That just sounds like, hell. <laughs> it also sounds like I'm setting myself up for a major failure considering maybe the last like four years of my personal development journey as I'm trying to be like 
the better person and growing up and all that stuff. There's been so much healing going on over here, behind the scenes, behind the curtain. I needed some space away from all of these people. And then I had this, this great idea, the audacity to think, oh my God, let's invite them to vacation with us somewhere they've never been across the country. Uh, great idea. I had full confidence, though, I'm going to be really real with y'all. It's been four years of work over here on my part. In the last episode about being abundant, you heard about my father and the relationship that we have and my mom and how we went through a few years of rockiness. And that was giving me enough time to like work on myself, get better with myself, and grow up and start to see people through a different lens, as we talked about. And I just want to preface right now, my parents are absolutely amazing people. They are super awesome. They flew across the country to be here and stay two weeks with us, and one of those weeks being at the Jersey Shore. So we weren't at the Jersey Shore for two whole weeks. And I just want to say kudos to them. They treated us so many times. They treated our kids way too many times, and we ended up leaving liking each other even more. Isn't that what it's all about? It, we broke some rules. I think we broke some rules. We made up some new rules and we kind of went with the flow, tried to not survive, but to really thrive. So when I use the word survive, I'm kind of using it to be silly. We really weren't in survival mode, <laughs> um, but we really were learning how to thrive and be around each other with having boundaries and expectations and space and all these healthy new things that we've all been practicing. And taking that in your home and then outside of your home, that's a completely different experience. Everyone's in a different place when you're not in the home. You don't feel as comfortable. It's kind of weird, right? So when my parents fly into Jersey, we made it to where it can be the most comfortable possible without them having to get a hotel and all that jazz. Because the beauty of my parents visiting, or any of our parents really, is that they get to be in the home with the grandkids as much as freaking possible. That's the goal, is that we don't have to parent as much and we can get rid of them, right? <laughs> Just kidding, <laughs> kinda. <laughs> so when my parents come to visit, they actually stay here in this room that I am recording in right now. It's a podcast room, there's a DJ deck over there, all my photography gears over here, my son in his um, VR and whatever the heck else he does over there. We have the couch and we have a full-size TV and all the gaming systems and we have a bathroom and a back door where you can escape. That's where my parents stay, that's where Jeff's parents stay. And this is kind of like their little house. It's like a little apartment of sorts. We try not to come down here and bother them too much. They have their own air conditioner. They have their own heating. I mean, really, it's like their little escape until we have to come down here and get like a print off from the printer or grab something from our desk. But otherwise, it's theirs. It's really created some healthy boundaries for us that like when they're down here, they can escape the family as a whole which is really important when you're staying in my home. I want you to have a place to retreat and to go to. So all of my guests are welcome to stay in this walkout basement. And then you walk outside and it's a freaking lake. Yeah. You can go out and watch the sunrise or the sunset. You can get eat up by bugs. You can do whatever you want because it's yours. That has really, really made a huge difference in the health of our relationships. So before we even went on vacation, it really started the minute they got here that they have their own space and that we have our space. Unfortunately, in my house, because it is a tri-level house, well, it sounds like cattle stomping all day and all night. So <laughs> they've just gotten used to it, I think. <laughs> us running up and down the stairs and running around the kitchen and living room but you know it's just a part of staying somewhere for free you know what I mean <laughs> there's a price to pay <laughs> but you know there's always been the 72 hour rule that's what everyone's always told me like one day good with your family two days keep your mouth shut <laughs> three days let's think about going somewhere else now and a lot of people live by the 72 hour rule and I think that it is a real thing because when I stayed in my parents house in Texas, and they have a little bitty house. There's only one living room. There's not two living rooms. And all you have is your bedroom that you're staying in or the living room. It's dangerous, y'all. It's dangerous. There's nowhere to go. There's no privacy. There's not enough space. It's no one's fault. It's just the way that it is. I do believe in the 72-hour rule for that. <laughs> Probably why my dad bought and turned the house behind him into an Airbnb so that I wouldn't be um, having to adhere to the 72-hour rule and then all hell break loose after that, right? I do believe in that rule if you're staying in a very confined space. But we've set it up pretty cool where our parents 
come down here. And when they're down here, it's, it is Nan and Dad all, our Grammy and Paul's place. Our kids come down here. They get to do whatever they want. If they're on iPads. They're eating cotton candy. I don't know. I, I don't ask questions. It's just when they come up the stairs, I look at their face. I look at their eyes and I decide how long they've been staring at something or how much they've been eating of something. <laughs> but this is their house, their rules. And I think they really enjoy it. And we do too, because we get a little personal time, catch up time, work on this podcast time. And it's just really created some healthy boundaries for us. We personally invited them to go to the Jersey Shore because my mom and dad are 65 and 66. And I was like, man, they're of the age where retirement is here. It's time to live. It's time to go. They're still in pretty good health. And I want them to be able to see and do things for themselves mostly, but also with us and our children. And after COVID, it kind of stole so much time and memories. And it kind of just made me feel like, I don't know, like we missed out. Like there was a time warp or something that happened. And everyone got exponentially older very quickly. Thinking about the beach and thinking about the Jersey Shore and all the walking and all the heat and all the stuff. I don't even like it. Like I hate it, but I do it because I love my children. And I was like, we've got to get my family to the shore. And I asked them probably three or four times. And then all of a sudden I got a resounding, yes, we can't wait. We're so excited. I freaked out. I was like, oh my God. And literally for like the last three months, we've all been just waiting for the day for them to get here so that we can go to the Jersey Shore. Now, some of you might be like, what's the big deal about the Jersey Shore? The Jersey Shore is legit unique. Okay. I'm from Texas though. We don't have boardwalks. So for me, this is still nostalgic to me. It's still special to me. It's our fifth year to go, our fifth year to go to Wildwood. And it was our second year attempting to love the beach. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and it was the first time I've ever vacationed with my parents. So there is a lot to unpack here, but I have I just have to give like major props to my husband. He's sitting in the room watching, as y'all all know, Jeffrey. He knows that I am a type A personality. Um, I can be very stressful. I can go from zero to 100, 100% very quickly. But this trip, we made some rules for ourselves, some expectations for ourselves, and we really balanced each other out when drama would happen, when stress would happen. And I just really appreciate him you know, just filling in the gap for the places when you're vacationing with your own family. If it was his parents, I could kind of get on my phone and just like walk away. But it's my parents, so I'm fully invested in everything that's happening. And I want everything to just be good and kosher and fun and no drama and nothing go bad. And so he really was helping me and supporting me in that way. So find a good partner. That's just a side note for you. <laughs> find a good partner. All right, so I'm going to give you five tips and they are very broad and I'm going to tell you some really fun stories attached to these tips on how to survive a family vacation. And again, I'm not doing this to be serious. I'm doing this to really be funny. It's not that big of a deal. We're not surviving. We did thrive and we're all here and we all love each other very much and we're all liking each other still, which is everything to me. So let's get into it. Here's what we learned. Number one, be prepared. Mm. The Eagle Scout sitting in this room, which is not me, is very excited about number one. First thing up, guys, you have to drive separate cars. Please do not try to pile your whole family and your parents in your car. My dad rented his own car. He went out of his way to rent his own car for the entire trip. He can go anywhere he wants at any time. Smart man, right? You don't have to always stay together as a clump. That's very, very stressful and staying in separate units or rooms. So we stayed in the same place. Shout out to Daytona Inn. Love this place. It's our fourth year to stay there. And we love, love, love it. But we did different rooms. So they were like five doors down and the kids could just run out, run to the grandma and grandpa door and then run back to our door. It kind of got annoying, I'm not gonna lie, because Mabel would just walk out the freaking front door like four years old, acting like she's 20 and like, I'm out, like shut the door, like she's leaving to go somewhere. I'm like, girl, you can't just walk out the door. But it did get them some independence and it gave my parents, again, their own separate space. It was their rules, their way. And then when they came back to our room, it was our rules and back to base which they never liked. <laughs> really important tip for us having children was to make sure we had a unit that has a bedroom. Y'all, you need a door that shuts. You need a room with beds in it that shuts. 
<laughs> we like having a living area with the kitchenette and the fridge and the TV. It's kind of like a little living room combo vibe. But we like cooking breakfast in the morning with each other. Or that's a lie. Jeff cooks breakfast by himself. I am not out of the bed till like 10. That was a complete lie. <laughs> be real we like having the separate rooms because sometimes the kids will go into the bedroom and play their ipads or jump on the beds and me and jeff will sit on the couch and watch tv or be on our phones or research what we're doing for the next day just having space like separate spaces that i think that's really the words i could end this podcast right now just stay separated <laughs> you gotta keep them separated i know you're thinking that song right now i know you are um and as much as you want to be together, because that was the whole point, you really have to find time to be separated. It's the key to all success. Insanity, really. So I'm just going to go down some things that I was thinking about when I was trying to think, like, what do we do? Now, we're Southerners. So I'm Texan. Jeff is Louisianan. And there's one thing we have in common. You always bring your own cooler to any and every event. You never know when you need ice and you never know when you need a cold beverage, y'all. I don't get Jersey people. They don't bring their own coolers. I don't get it. We bring a gigantic cooler, right? It's huge. It's the one that holds the food. It's got some ice packs in it. It's like all the food we're gonna eat for breakfast and anything cold. Then we make sure we have drinks and ice, mainly waters and, you know, things that are gonna keep us hydrated. They're good for us that are not soda. <laughs> and then we also have all our groceries and this, oh, y'all hold on. This is a big one. For those of you watching on the YouTube right now, I'm actually gonna show you our failure from a couple of years ago, how we are winning our fifth year. And it's called tiny condiments. Yes, tiny condiments like ketchups, Chick-fil-A sauce, strawberry jam, butter, bring butter. If you're gonna cook eggs, don't, don't depend on the bacon. It does not always work. Okay, so we learned we have to bring condiments. Those are the one thing we forgot. So as we collect these throughout the entire year, we don't trash them. We keep them in a little place and then we bring them with us on vacation so you can have a nice jam or a nice tiny packet of ketchup instead of bringing the whole freaking bottle of ketchup. Um, these are really a lifesaver. And that was a huge hack for us because when we didn't have butter last year, let's just say breakfast was not the same. <laughs> Tiny condiments for the win. So big coolers and small coolers. Now the big cooler, food and all that, but small coolers, y'all, that's the one you can take to the ice machine. My husband would get up really early when there's fresh ice and it hasn't been rampaged by all the people and get fresh ice, come fill it up, make sure we have our cooler nice and cold because the fridges don't keep your stuff cold. They keep it cool, but I like it cold. So we had fresh ice every day. And also the small cooler is portable. You can take it with you anywhere you go. The boardwalk can go in the stroller. It can go to the beach. Like, folks, get yourself two coolers. One for your shoulder and one to drag behind you. Got it? Great tip. Okay, now we bring all of our groceries with us. But just side note, if you're one of those bougie people, like we do at Disney World, but not here because we're not bougie at the Jersey Shore, you can actually order your groceries and have them delivered to your place once you're there. That's really cool. We haven't really done that. At the Jersey Shore, we don't see it necessary because we're driving three hours. So we're like, it can stay cold for three hours. But you could be one of those people if you want to be. All right, so let's go back to the stomping cattle. Remember I told you my parents when they stay down here at my house, it sounds like a cattle drive. You don't know which floor you're going to get on when you're in a hotel room, right? Or a motel or whatever you're doing. So we bring a white noise machine. I mean, this thing is so loud. It, it, it's the loudest one I've ever heard. And still, it's not enough. I bring in a white noise machine. I have my phone on white noise. I think Jeff might even have his on white noise. And you can still hear the little kids. But what's amazing about all the cattle drive noises is when they happen. <laughs> it's not at 8 o'clock at night. It's not 10 o'clock at night. It's like 2 in the morning. Why are your toddlers awake at 2 in the morning? And when you really think about it, like I'm going to have to just tell myself it's all the cotton candy and the soda and the... 11 30 p.m ice cream that's what it is <laughs> they put us on the bottom floor this year but we were prepared we thought we were prepared anyways we had white noise with us i even had a portable fan this year my mom has a sweater she's always sweating so i told her i said be prepared as good as the air conditioner could be in this hotel because we know it is you're going to probably need a fan on your face because you're my mother and i need one too so she goes on the internet and she buys us these two portable fans and they're big and i'm gonna tell you what 
that's a game changer. It, there's no ceiling fans up in those places. To have a fan on your face is good. But <laughs> what you're going to think is really weird is I always bring a heavy blanket too. <laughs> Because I have to stay cool, but I also have to stay warm. Really, it's about the weight. I like to, I need something like weighted on my body. Because it's like just sheets. Like who can just sleep in sheets? Apparently my husband. He's the only one that did not bring his own blanket. And he survived. Not for us, apparently. Not the other three. Another good tip. Pillowcases. I know that might sound weird, but this girl's got hair. Okay? And when you've got this much hair and you're scared of germs... I like to bring my own pillowcase. It's nice. It's silk. It's mine. I just zip it right over theirs. And I know that the germs are not going into my nose. And I know that my hair is being protected. And I feel really confident in that. So I've got my blanket. I've got my pillowcase. I got my fan. I brought my own pillow that I travel with and I carry everywhere I go. It's just getting a little ridiculous. Half the trunk is like the stroller, the cooler, and Leah. Her crap. <laughs> But they love me nonetheless, so I guess we'll just keep going on vacations until we need a bigger car, which I don't know how that would ever happen because we cannot afford another car. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you one for my husband. We're going to take a little bit of a left real quick, okay? He gets back home. Now, we, our daughter's four, and the thing about four, no, think about all of us. I'm just going to say it. It's going to be weird. Jeff thinks that we all need a travel squatty potty. If you don't know what a squatty potty is... <laughs> It's an apparatus that goes underneath your toilet that you put your feet on that helps you go to the bathroom better. Now, you might be like, oh, that's ridiculous. We were turning over trash cans upside down for my daughter to put her feet on. She was having a really hard time balancing. She, she, you know, she couldn't put her feet on the ground. And I was like, oh, man, I wish we had a squatty potty. And we're like, man, I wish they had a portable one. And I think that they do, uh, but it's still rather large. So if you can bring a squatty potty, let me tell you why. You're not drinking enough water. Which brings me to, please bring your own water bottle. I got my 20,000 ounce Stanley with me. I, I use this sucker every day. I'm gonna take one right now, actually. The key to hydration on a vacation and really going to the bathroom, I'm just gonna be real, y'all. Y'all gotta drink your water. You've got to drink your water. And so she definitely didn't have enough water. I was putting fiber in my water. Um, I was ahead of the game. It still wasn't perfect, but I was, I was on a mission to not be in pain, but poor baby girl, she was just having the hardest time. And so if she would have had something to put her feet on, she might've been able to go, but I added fiber to her water and then hot tip parents. If your kid is eating too much crap and they're feeling like poo and they can't go poo, put them in a warm bath and let them swim around and wiggle and just move. Like that's the exercise and the moving of their legs and their hands and stuff. It loosens things up and it gets them moving usually. So that, and I just bring Benefiber everywhere I go. And on, on top of that, magnesium. And we're just going to talk about poop for a second. Okay, everybody just get used to it. We're talking about poop. There's a great book uh, my daughter reads upstairs all about poop. I should have brought it down to share it with you, but we don't have that much time, but it's really, really good. And the whole time we're like, is it going to be, you know, we're like listing all the kinds of things it could be. Is it going to be a corn dog? Is it going to be ice cream? <laughs> yeah, the book is really gross, but funny. And so magnesium is a huge thing to add to your diet. If you're not traveling with magnesium, you're asking for it. <laughs> so with some fiber and some magnesium, and God, do not forget this. This is the most important part of your bathroom experience. Lean in. Poopery spray. I know there's others. I know there's all brands. This is the brand of all brands. It really works. And when you have an enclosed bathroom with no window, with a grown man on vacation, you gots to have the poopery spray. You might not can get the squatty potty, but you can put some spray in your bag and save your life and your nostrils. <laughs> it's a real thing. You, there was only a front door. There was no windows in this whole unit. So we couldn't like just open a window. It was like, mm -mm, you stuck. <laughs> oh God. This is maybe TMI for you that are listening right now. TMI. Um, and bring all the medicines you can think of. You guys prepare for the worst. Just prepare for the worst. That's my, you know, Jeff is prepared for the end of the world and survival and how to build everything out of scratch. I'm like, let's just keep everybody well. I want everyone to stay well because if someone gets sick on vacation, it sucks. 
and it ruins it for them and for everybody. And then we're all scared. We're all going to get sick. And that's me. I'm a panicker. So bring all the medications. Also, folks, just embrace the electronics. Do not harp on your children. Let them have the iPad, the phone. Give yourself a vacation on your vacation. Because sometimes you just need them to go. Preload some movies that are pre-downloaded in case you have crap Wi-Fi. Um, Netflix is good for that. Uh, um, Prime. All the major, you know, things are. But that saves our hiney. But we, we used to let them watch them in the car. But then we got pukers. Now we have puking kids. So if they watch things in the car, they puke. So we don't do that. <laughs> but when we're in that little tiny room cooped up and mama needs a nap and Mabel needs a nap and Trace doesn't and dad's snoozing kind of on his phone... You may need an iPad or something for the kids to be entertained. So don't be like, oh, the rules stay the same on vacation. Like, eh, flex a little bit. Be like, yeah, sure you can, kid. Here's two hours while I take a nap. <laughs> you have to survive. Remember, this is about survival. So another key tip to a successful trip is a good stroller. But this was the year. Mabel is four. I actually Googled it. Strollers for four-year-olds. And they were like, <laughs> there was articles that were like, they should be walking and enjoying life and growing up. But I was like, oh, no, they don't. They need to sit down every once in a while and take a nap. That's what they need to do. <laughs> so we have, you know, a really nice luxury stroller. And then we have a portable stroller that's like backpack, but it's kind of falling apart. Um, and I was like, this is the year. This is the year. We're going for the wagon. The wagon. The wagon. There's so many different kinds of wagons. I will link y'all to the one that we have. It is like the creme de la creme. It's got the pull. It's got the push. It's got a place for ice chests. It's got places for bottles. It's got places for everything. And it's massive. It's an, big enough that a four-year-old can take a nap in it. And it's low enough she can crawl in it by herself. Because I don't want to be lifting her between every single ride or cry or toy or need for some food okay so the wagon was amazing but here's the thing about the wagon when you are going to the beach <laughs> whoo it's heavy it's really heavy so we divvied out some of the stuff to trace and to me mabel's free of course she can do whatever she wants and jeff's like i've got this so we actually did not do this so i'm not going to claim we did it we were going to do it and i talked him out of it and then when we got there i felt really bad because it probably should have done it but i don't know if we had room in our trunk so i don't know if it really could have happened but here's the helpful tip that we did not do but i'm sure we will do it next year if we make it back to the beach which i do not have i do not I just do not think it's going to happen, <laughs> but you can take a plastic sled, right? Like you use in the winter and you can put it under your wheels and then basically sled it right through the sand. That was such a smart idea because we didn't get one of the beach, you know, the, the beach wagons or whatever. We got like one for our kid. It's not made for sand. So while it's large and awesome and it holds a bunch of crap, it's not made to go through sand. It was really brutal. I'm not going to lie. It was pretty brutal. The sand is like from the devil. I don't like sand. It gets in places. It's hard to walk in. It's hot. My children are like tiptoeing and then their flip-flops are getting stuck. And it is just, I don't know why y'all like the beach. Somebody's going to have to convince me how to beach better and like the beach because I, I need a shirt. I don't like the beach. I'm sure I would just meet so many lovely people if I wore that shirt. But I do know a helpful fact if you're getting sand all over you and you want to get it off. Baby powder really easy. Just brush it all over you, wipe it off. And also a paintbrush, a dry paintbrush. When I was a photographer, I'd get in the sand and I'd have to have all kinds of clever ways to get clean. So be prepared by having a bunch of these items with you. And then just keep the vibe while you're out on the beach. I have a portable speaker. It's kind of big. It's not huge. It's big enough to make the cries and the screams of my children disappear. I'm hot. I'm hungry. Can we go now? How long have we been here? I've got sand in my eyes. I mean, y'all, <laughs> last year we made, the two years ago, we tried it. We made it maybe 45 minutes. This year, I think we got two hours in. I think we did. But what we didn't know is rave alarm. We were entering Burning Man 2023, Jersey Shore style, and we had no idea. <laughs> The wind was blowing 35 freaking miles per hour. We decided to put our stuff down in the sand and that sand was just coming up and enveloping our entire body in our mouth, in our eyes, in our cups, in our food. 
it was god awful it was sent from satan himself so i just want you to know burning man 2023 wildwood was not a success and i will talk to you more about that later i'm gonna have to cool down because i'm gonna get heated about it so these are some ways for you to be more prepared when you're hanging out on a vacation with your family all right we're moving on to number two yes there's more You've got to be flexible. Number two is be flexible. So let's just go into this beach story. Number one, you can't be in a hurry. Every day we woke up, quote unquote, to my father, late. What's late? <laughs> late is relative, right? On vacation, what is late? We woke up at 10. So what? Who cares? <laughs> it was good for us, right? And the schedule has to stay loose. So like, don't get too, too like set in stone that things are going to be this way and that way and this way. A couple years ago, I was like that. This year, literally every day, the night before, I'd be like, so what are we doing tomorrow? What's tomorrow? Usually the weather or the children, if one was not feeling well, which did happen, or something kind of went awry, that's what would help us make the next best decision. So there was not a calendar of events. No, there was not. Even though I'm that girl, no, I did not have a calendar of events. I just had some ideas of where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do with my family all together, hopefully maybe not. All right. But weather and illness did play a part in our trip. And it almost does every time you go near water or the beach. Don't spend every moment together. I'm just going to put that out there right now. No one has you tethered together. Does make does not make you stronger. You're not better together. I know that's a phrase I use a lot. But you're not better together on vacation. You're better at listening and thinking and understanding when people need space. I know from the past previous experience that beaches are not my friend. Beaches torture my children. And the beach literally, y'all, in Wildwood is like two football fields till you even see water. Okay, it starts off really thick sand and you're like, oh God, we're not going to make it. And then about halfway, it's like, oh, thinner sand, we're making it, but it's really hot. And then you get all the way up to the water and you're just like, oh, you're sweating, you're covered in dirt. It's just... I don't know why. I don't know why we keep trying to do this. But this year, the kids were kind of excited. They had their tools. They got a digger. Like, we're going to build some sandcastles and yada, yada, yada. Jeff, being the hero that he is, brought the cabana. Y'all, this cabana is awesome, okay? But here's the thing. I swear to God, the wind was blowing 35 miles per hour. Other people's were they were tilted, like tilted back. And I was like, why is all theirs tilted back? You know, why are these beachgoers all tilted back? And why there's the single ones, you know, the single people with the umbrella, why there's not moving? And ours is like, whoa, 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 just flapping in the wind. And uh, I will say he put it together very, very quickly. He was very precise. It took some teamwork and a little bit of arguing to realize that we needed to put the stroller in the middle so that it did not blow away because it was about to blow away. No shit, you guys. This thing was going to take off. And as we're building it and putting it together, people are looking at us like we're crazy. Like, are you really putting that gigantic thing up? And I'm like, yes, because we didn't bring chairs. No, we're just like, we'll sit on the cute beach friendly, sand friendly blanket that we brought and we'll put it right under here. And you know what the wind said to that? Screw you. That ain't going to be fun either. <laughs> it's just flapping in the wind, just throwing dirt in your eyeballs when you sit down. I was like, okay, Jesus, I love you. Satan, why? Why can't we just have a good trip? It was so funny looking back now. I mean, it was funny for about an hour. And then after an hour and a half, I was like, okay. And then, then two hours in, I was like, we got to go. Like my son, I sent him to the ocean to wash his body off one last time because he had dirt in every orifice. His eyes were dirt. Everything was dirt. He was like basically the mummy. So I was like, all right, let's just get out of here. This is not good. And so we packed up faster than we set up. <laughs> the stroller was so full of dirt. I was having panic about that. We were covered. My kids don't like sand. So we're all covered. We're like, you just got to get up to, you know, the boardwalk when you get to the boardwalk there's a shower nope we picked the one without the shower yep you're right we picked the one without the shower i'm gonna tell you we're not gonna try again next year because i'm not gonna put myself through this again <laughs> and i just want to give you permission to not be a beach goer it's okay you don't have to like the beaches if you're a resort girl like me totally get it i was just looking for the cabana boy and a pool and he was nowhere in sight <laughs> come on wildwood level up 
level up. So be prepared and be flexible. I did what I had to do. We built the sand castles. We took the pictures. We put the cabana up. We ate a sandwich on the beach. We rode the boogie board. We did the things. We made the memories. I was flexible enough to get there, and I was also flexible enough to get my hiney out of there fast. So we got back. We never did that again for the rest of the trip. And my parents, um, after hearing about all of our fun, were like super excited that they did not go. And they were fresh, freshly showered and good. <laughs> so number three, self-care. All right. You might be thinking, why are you talking about self-care on a vacation? Guys, self-care is really important all the time. Self-care is making sure that you're going to be well and it's going to keep you sane. You have to take care of yourself even when you're away. I always tell my clients, um, my, I'm a life coach in case you guys did not know, and I love to prepare my clients to be successful. And so I, one of the things I always ask them before they go out on a vacation or spend time away from their home is what can you pack in your suitcase for your mental health, self-care, the way you take care of yourself, and continue that where you're going. So not a physical suitcase, but in your mind. And so one of those things for me, one of those things for me was I've been working out for two and a half months. I am going to work out for the first time on vacation. So the reason I decided I was going to do this was number one, I want to be one of those people so bad. You know, those people, quote unquote, those people, you see them like up at like 6 a.m. with no shirt on, jogging on the, on the boardwalk or they're out riding their bikes and they're like doing all their very workouty things. And I'm like, oh, those people. Those people are awesome. Those people probably don't have little kids either. <laughs> Who's watching them? The grandparents? No. <laughs> so my, like in my mind, when I was thinking about what to talk to you about, and I was thinking about self-care, the first thing I thought about was when we didn't know what the Jersey Shore was, the only thing I knew about Jersey before moving here was the show, the Jersey Shore. I know. <laughs> Just go back to Snooky, the poof, the situation, like all of the things. That's what I thought the Jersey Shore was. And there is a part of the Jersey Shore that is like that. This part is not necessarily like that. But their, their slogan was GTL, gym, tan, laundry. And so I was going to be like, I'm totally going to gym, tan, and laundry this, this trip. Like I'm doing it. I'm going to gym, tan, and laundry this trip. All right. Texas girl coming in hot. So first things first, gym. I brought weights. I brought a stretch band. I bought, God, a yoga mat, my tennis shoes, my clothes. I was ready. I was like, I'm bringing one outfit. I'm going to at least work out two times. I've got this. Fail. <laughs> the yoga mat ended up being just a play mat for Mabel so she didn't have to touch the nasty floor. And honestly, we slept until 10 o'clock every day and we stayed up till one or two o'clock every night. We were so off. It There was no time. I, maybe you think you could have carved out a few minutes. I, honestly, I didn't. <laughs> I never even looked at the weights. I never even found them. I don't even know where they were. I found them when they were in the car when I unpacked. I was like, oh boy. I didn't do that very well. So Jim, didn't work out. Tan. I love to get a good spray tan right before I go on vacation. And so do the Jersey Shore people, apparently, too. Even though they're Italian and they spray tan on top of being Italian, so they're, like, super dark. I'm just trying not to blind people. That's the goal with the spray tan. Now, normally, I go to my girl's house. Shout out to my tana lady. I go to her house, and she sprays me, and I stay good for a good seven days. So me and my mom decide we're going to do it together, but she is doing it on the go. So she is bringing it into people's houses. So she's in my house and she's spraying me. And the next day I wake up, I rinse off and I'm like, it's not really dark enough. I really wish I would have went darker. So I had this grand idea, this new stuff that I use, and I'll link you to it. I'm like, I'm just going to double it up on top of what she did. So I layered, lathered it on. I have it all up. And I'm trying not to sweat. I'm like, the key to the success of this tan is to get in this car and drive to the Jersey Shore with my family and not sweat. So I sat on a towel with my, my, <laughs> my seats have heated and cooled. It was on high cool. I was like, you will not sweat. I'm sitting with my arms out. I'm just trying not to drip because I want my tan to be so perfect. And then we got there and I got distracted. I totally forgot what was going on. I was supposed to shower that layer of tanning lotion off. <laughs> Oops, I forgot. So I slept in it 
And then the next morning we woke up and we got ready to go to the uh, water park. And when we get to the water park, there is no seats left except by, by the damn splash pool. Y'all, I hate being splashed. I don't like my hair to get wet. I don't like my face to get wet. I don't want my lashes coming off. I'm a bougie girl. And especially, I don't want my tan coming off. But I had completely forgot about the tan. I'm just trying to get seats. I'm trying to make sure we're comfortable. We got enough towels and not cause drama with the lady who's telling me I stole her chair. You know, typical stuff. And this kid comes by, this little ass. He is probably the size of my son. He's probably like 10 or 12. And he is doing like high kicks. High freaking kicks with his toes. And he drenches me in water and I'm like ah! I'm like totally bouging out I'm like ah! oh my god my mom's looking at me and she's like ah, what a little whatever and I'm like ah! oh my god what a, whatever I take my cover up off and I sit in the chair <laughs> my mom looks over at me now she didn't do the second layer of tan she said I'll just be weird and light that's fine I look down and my legs are dripping brown <laughs> <laughs> there are streaks down my arms and my legs and Jeff is coming up from behind and I'm like oh hell no no one's gonna see me melting and as I go towards the splash park which I hate I just lay myself in the kid pool like I'm laying in the kid pool and I'm taking the water and just throwing it on my body and I'm just trying to get the brown streaks off it looks like I'm bathing I was taking a bath in the splash pad <laughs> Oh my God. Jeff was taking pictures and video the whole time. Like he thought it was funny. I'm not quite sure he knew what was happening, but my mom did. And she was laughing so hard and I was just so embarrassed. I was like, oh my God, I hope nobody sees this. But after a good bath, <laughs> there's no telling what else is in that water. So I don't feel bad about it. Um, it evened itself out and I wasn't dripping brown everywhere. And I had a nice, nice glow. And here's a little like side tip for you guys. If you get spray tans, please make sure to rinse off. If you put more tanning lotion on, please rinse off. Um, but sunblock is super duper important. Don't forget your sunblock. Wear a hat to you guys. Don't, don't forget about your head, your scalp. But the sunblock that I use for my spray tan is sun bum. The year before, I didn't realize that certain kinds of lotions and different kinds of sunscreen will actually take off your tan. So I sprayed my arms and lathered them last year and Jeff came by and he's like, what happened? I was like, what do you mean? What happened? He said to your arms. And I was like, uh, what? He's they're white. I had literally wiped all of my spray tan off my arms and now I had brown legs and white arms. Just live through me. <laughs> if you have questions about spray tans, I'm your girl. I've done everything wrong. <laughs> And then laundry is the last one with gym, tan, and laundry, Jersey Shore style. <laughs> All right. Laundry. No, I don't do laundry at the Jersey Shore. I'm not about that. If I'm staying with somebody in their house, yes. Laundry everything. So when you get home, it's all clean. That's a good tip. But at the shore, you bring trash bags. We use trash bags from our house and we divvy it out by the kids and by the adults and we repack our bags with the trash bags so all the dirty clothes are packed and the trash perfect just don't leave them out to be thrown away that would be absolutely terrible <laughs> make sure you put them in the right place and i'm going to add to the gtl i'm going to say gtl h for hair as y'all know i love my extensions it's a huge extension of me <laughs> i always make sure that i have a really good hat the hat that i choose right now is from amazon i've had it a couple of years it's just the perfect brim hat. So I'll make sure that you're linked to that. So a good hat covers your face, but also covers your scalp. A lot of people don't realize that your scalp can get super duper burned. Everybody, women, listen, fake hair or real hair, it don't matter. It don't matter. You need oil. You need butter. You need not to cook. <laughs> you're thinking why are we talking about the kitchen you need moisture in your hair you guys the beach and being by water in general will just dry you up like that like boop, dried up so i will share with you i'm using a hair butter on my hair 
and I'm also using braid balms on Mabel and mine hair. So these will keep your hair moisturized. It also keeps your hair from getting frizzy and weird and keeps like my braids or my bubble braids or my buns really, really tight and not falling out. It kind of pulls everything together. And the goal for me when I'm on vacation is to try not to wash my hair. I do everything in my power to not wash my hair. Lots of oil, lots of dry shampoo, lots of brushing, lots of braids, lots of updos because hair and beach just don't go together and I'm actually brushing my hair. I found this amazing new brush. I'm not even going to try to tell you what it is because I can't read it, but I'll link you to it. This is the greatest wet hair brush I've ever had and I've been recently using it as a dry hair brush and it's tiny. It's great for vacation because you can stick it in small places. So I'm going to link you to all this stuff because your hair matters. Hair freaking matters. So G T L H. That's the Leah version. And while we're talking about self care, just really quickly, please find moments to be alone. I know you came with your husband, your kids, your family. Go phone a friend. Just go and be alone. Go read a book. Request time off. It's good for your mental health. Do a parent swap. He watches the kids for two hours. Then you swap. You watch the kid for two hours. Just use your imagination. What do you like to do when you're alone? Is it by the pool? Go out for a jog? That's not me. <laughs> Go ride a rental bike. Um, what is it? Go shopping. Figure out what it is that's going to make you feel alive and like you're taking care of yourself. And not just kids, 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 kids. Because that can get very, very exhausting. Also, midday rest. Y'all, take a midday rest. You don't have to sleep. Just lay your body down, put your feet up, let all the tension leave your body, let all the food process through your body, get hydrated because it's the hottest part of the day. You don't need to be out running around in that stuff anyways. Have some quiet time and force your kids to have some too. That's where that handy dandy iPad comes in, okay? So use what you got to use. A new pair of shoes every day. I know. You're like, oh my God, how many pairs of shoes did you pack? I packed a lot. I packed a lot of shoes. I did. Because my back actually starts to hurt. My body actually starts to hurt if I don't have different pairs of shoes. So my doctor gave me this tip. He was like, A, try not to wear flat shoes all the time. It's really hard for you to walk around it. It's bad for your back. He said, but also change your shoes every day. So I would go between a tennis shoe and a Birkenstock and then a tennis shoe and a Birkenstock. And that way my feet and my back didn't give out on me because if you hurt yourself or injure yourself or you don't feel good, you can't continue your vacations. So this is really, really important is to take care of your feet, which take care of your back, which take care of how you feel and how you sleep, everything. So shoes are very, very important. Also, self-care, eat real food. I know it's all fried. I know it's an Oreo. I know it's a corn dog. I know it's ice cream and I know it's a churro. But try to find some whole foods for your body. It's a self-care thing. You want your body to process food. You want to feel good. You want to feel your best, look your best. You are going to probably gain some pounds. You're going to bloat a little bit. This is totally normal coming from a health coach. Just want you to know that. But between your huge water bottle that you brought and getting in some real food at once a day, vegetables are really hard to find on a boardwalk. <laughs> Get off the boardwalk and go find some real food. We did that, and I'll tell you more about that later. That was a whole story within itself. And then, of course, my parents had a great self-care tip. While we were resting after the water park and after the beach fiascos, right? That was exhausting. They were showered indoor at the arcade when no one was there doing some kind of like special gambling session <laughs> where you earn like 400 tickets for every time you get a whatever on the blackjack. And I'm like, where were y'all? And they're like, we collected like 100,000 tickets today. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, we sat there and played there for like two hours. So they found a way to be alone, take care of themselves. And they were still, they still spending money to try to get something on the wall of prizes for our children. So Self-care is really important to keep you feeling well, keep you healthy, and keep you sane, really. And part of surviving a vacation is staying sane. Moving on to number four, 
managing your stress and relationships. Hello. <laughs> Woo. Let's just remember the 72 hour rule. We are exceeding that by having my family in my house, by also traveling on the road with them three hours away and then going on a vacation for five days. We are busting all the rules. We are breaking them all and we are just forging forward in our relationships with each other. It takes a lot of trust to do this, to go on vacation for a long period of time. It takes boundaries. It takes communication. It takes forgiveness. It takes a lot of growing up. You cannot go into a situation like this and act like a kid. You can't. It, you won't survive. There will be people leaving early, people getting in arguments, people fighting, people just going wackadoo. And the whole point is to be together and make memories. And so the 72-hour rule, we just said, screw that. We're going to do what we want to do. <laughs> we worked really hard to be here. And I think that if you're going to manage your stress and you're going to show up as the best grown-up version of yourself, guys, you're going to have to have a partner in crime. Mine is my husband. We have, gosh, we have so many conversations, not about like other people at the thing. Well, yeah, we talk about that too. But we talk about before we even go, like, what's the plan? Is there a code word? What are you going to say when you need to do that? And do you need time away? Do you need space for me? I remember at one point in the vacation, I said, I just need to be alone. And he kind of got upset. He's like, no, don't do that. I was like, no, healthy alone. Like, I just need to be alone, like for like 10 minutes. But we didn't have that conversation about that. So having those conversations and knowing and forecasting what's coming really helps manage your expectation and lower your stress. So have a code word. I'm not going to tell you what ours is because that would ruin the whole point. But make sure it's fun and it fits the theme of where you're at. Don't say like Colorado in the middle of the Jersey Shore. That makes no sense. <laughs> um, make time to be alone and separate from your children separate from them. If your parents are there or your in-laws are there, give them the gift of time with your kids. They love it. And when they don't want them, they send them right back to you. Okay. Just do it, but be ready. Be ready that an incident is going to happen. It does every time. After the 72 hours is usually when it happens. You, you double dog dare you to pay attention next time. Give it three days. And on the fourth day, maybe fifth, if you're lucky, an incident will happen. How are you going to respond? How are you going to respond? Are you going to react? Do you have a plan? Do you have a code word? Do you have a partner in crime with you? Do you have a way that you want to respond to this where you don't have regrets? I have to have those kind of plans because I'm a reactor naturally. So to be a responder takes responsibility. And so I knew if something went awry what I had to do, who I had to partner with so that I could leave and say, I'm very proud of the way I handled myself. No judgment to anyone else. I'm only in control of what I can do and what I say. So be ready, be expecting for something to go awry because it will happen. You need to learn how to forgive very quickly and get over very quickly and not dig a hole deeper to be right. Sometimes you just need to be quiet and forgive. And in time, it just moves away. It just blows away like the sand did all over the Jersey damn shore. <laughs> Give it time, but not too much time. Forgive quickly and apologize if you did something. If you did it, get there quick. Just saying, grow up. Expect stressful situations. You know your family. You know yourself. And you know your triggers and you know their triggers. Here's some tips on how to navigate that. Number one, bring your healthy habits with you. Like we talked about in your invisible suitcase. If you're a workout person, continue to work out, please. Bring your water bottle. Bring your healthy foods, some supplemental foods for yourself. Bring some snacks that you know are going to fill your body with good nutrition, not just churros. Call a friend. Have a moment. Step aside. Read a good book. Bring your Kindle. Find those habits that you do at home and bring them with you on vacation. Number two, for tips, please practice something called breath work. If you've never heard of breath work, look it up. I'm sure I'll teach on it sometime. Guys, calming your nervous system down, bringing yourself and centering yourself, meditating, all these things really help to bring you back to center. When things feel like they're chaotic and going out of, out of control, get away from the stimulus that's causing it. Get to somewhere where you can ground yourself and then 
practice breathing. That's a whole other podcast for a whole other day. But breath work can really help bring you back to center where you realize that you're really close to the mountain and it seems so a big deal. But when you breathe and you move further away from the mountain, you realize it wasn't as big as you thought it was. So take time and breathe. And number three on how to help yourself a stressful situation is simply answering everyone with the word, okay, this will change your life. <laughs> this is the biggest tip of your life right now. Hold on to your seats. It's the shortest word in the world. O and K, unless you're the weirdo spells okay with the A-Y. Whatever, not gonna judge you. Okay, doesn't mean I agree, doesn't mean I disagree. It just means I heard you. I affirm, got it. That's it. So when someone says something to me and uh, I really want to wring their neck or I'm like, you're freaking nuts. Uh, any kind of negative, anything. I just say, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't add anything to it. This will dissolve a problem very quickly for you. It'll also keep one from escalating. So use the two letters. O and K to save your life. <laughs> save yourself from the drama. All right. Number four, walk away from the drama. Just turn around and walk away. You just want to walk away. Sometimes you have to separate yourself. Distance. Distance saves your life. Say, okay. Don't, now, don't say, okay, and turn and flick your hair and walk away. That, that's not what I'm saying here. <laughs> These are two separate actions. They don't go together. But walking away from drama as it's happening and you don't want to be a part of it is a respectful thing to do so you don't get in the middle of it. Or just walk away because you are in the drama and you want to separate it from the rest of the group. Like, don't make everyone a part of your drama, which makes you just that person. Nobody wants to be that person. Okay. Especially on vacation because then they're like, Oh, it was good till he did that. <laughs> we don't want that. Right. And the fifth and final tip for stressful situation, engage in conversations by asking questions. You guys, you're with your family. How often are you with your family like this in this capacity, all hanging out, chilling and doing your thing? Not very often. I know it's easy for us to want to sit there and just talk about ourselves. Like, I started a podcast, I'm in life coaching, I'm still health coaching, and I'm still a photographer, and my kids, oh, they're going to seventh grade, and one's going into pre-K, oh my God, and my grandkids are getting older, and like, I could sit there and talk about this all the dang day, but what I've learned is people want to be seen and heard, even your family, so to, to kind of take your family away from the family part, just like, they're a human being, they're a person, on this earth and you get to spend time with them in this moment where you sit with them and make conversation and say questions. So maybe, so how are things at work going? Are you still loving it? Hey, I know it was really hard when blank and blank happened. How are you feeling about that right now? Invest in your parents and your family's life. If you don't ask, you'll never know. And sometimes they've never said it out loud. I really think that Healing happens when you get outside of yourself and you put yourself in someone else's shoes. And vacation's a great time to do this, to just chat casually about their lives and dig a little deeper and get to know your parents again. Because I think as they get older and we get older and they grow up more and we grow up more, we just separate. We get, we just, it's distance, it's time, it's raising children, and it's getting older. Get to know them all over again. It's one of the greatest gifts you could give to yourself and to them. And here's a hot tip just for just st God, stay busy. Stay busy. Don't get too bored. And one of the ways that I stay busy, I'm always taking video and I'm always taking photos. What I love is nobody knows I'm doing it. And one of the things that my husband and I do is we actually do that at almost every event or birthday or whatever we go to. And then we actually will drop all those videos and photos to that person, surprise them with them. And they're like, oh my gosh, thank you for doing that. I'm like, yeah, no problem. We do the same thing on our vacations with our family. And then we all join on a family shared folder in our iPhone. And then we all have the photos and you can do whatever you want to with the photos and videos. So stay busy. And also what a blessing that everybody's showing how the vacation went through their lens, not just your lens. And get your butt in the photos. Don't be the only one taking the photos. Get in the photos. 
You're a person. You were there. You're good enough. You're beautiful. Who cares if your hair was crazy? Who cares if you didn't have the perfect figure? Women, get in the freaking photos. Document your memories, you guys. This will help manage your stress. All these things will help manage your stress and keep the drama at bay. Okay? With a okay. <laughs> and the final one. The fifth one. Expect the unexpected. You can plan all day long. You can try. I'm a planner, but you better be ready that things are going to get weird. <laughs> Schedules change. The first day we were there, uh, Mabel had already eaten too much crap. So the second day we wake up and we were like, we're going to do this. And guess what? Her stomach was hurting and she never has a st stomach ache. That is not something she says. And she's like, my stomach hurts. It's like, oh, farts. She's sick. We're not going to be able to stay on this vacation. But either way, we did some of the helpful tips that I told you earlier. She started feeling better and all was well. Weather. Guys, if I would have known it was 35 mile an hour winds by the beach, I would have changed my plans. But God was teaching me lessons of patience. And I went anyways. But you have to be prepared that things are going to go shit on you. Sometimes it's just going to be total shit shows. And you kind of have to laugh it off. Like, well, I was expecting some of that to happen. Expect opposition expect it. It's part of vacationing. Also, my husband had a tip for me to give you. Bring <laughs> opposite clothing for the season that you're traveling in. So it was summer. He had a pair of pants and he had a jacket because you just never know when it's going to be freaking cold on a random beach night. So that's from my husband to you. If you're an overpacker, you're welcome. Just add more clothes to the underpacker. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just empowering them to pack more clothes. But you never know. And shoes, right? A different pair of shoes every day. I'm sorry. You're going to have to have the 70-pound luggage that I talked about a couple weeks ago. It's just a thing. It's a thing. It's okay. I'm not judging you. <laughs> and then another weird thing. This was unexpected. Chafing. I know. That came out of left. You're like, where did that come from? Chafing is a real thing when you're sweating and your legs rub together. I had Mabel in dresses and her little legs were raw. And then after the water park and running up and down stairs and all that, my son's legs were chafed. And then after coming off of the beach from hell, my legs started to get chafed. And I, I will now put shorts on Mabel under her dresses. I will now bring dry clothes to the beach and he will change at the beach. And then because I did not bring dry clothes, this was really funny. I made my towel into a diaper. And I wore that thing all the way back to the hotel because it was hurting so bad. <laughs> I know it looked weird. It looked like I was flossing like with a towel <laughs> as I'm walking. But I was like, this is better than my burning thighs. If I got thick thighs, y'all. It's just part of it. So that was something really unexpected. And also, just what the hell? What the hell is going on with ice cream at night? Ice cream. Why? Why is the ice cream parlor empty all day? And there is so much. There's ice cream every 10 feet, by the way. Why? Why on God's green earth does everyone decide ice cream is for 1130 at night? It's closing time. It's midnight. They're shutting the freaking doors to the curly fries and to the, all the things that people are running to the ice cream. Do y'all have gut issues like me? Do you not? have the same problems as me is everyone just good with with cream and milk jesus it was it was late every night so i don't know but i'll tell you what that led to <laughs> that led to being in the arcades y'all crop dusting is a real thing why do you not think that i'm not going to figure out it was you it was you and we all know it it follows you. My husband knows this well. He tries to do it in his house or outside. He'll he'll try to do the right thing. I'm like, honey, that's like a jet stream behind you. It is lethal. And it happened in the damn arcade every time I went. And then one time it happened and I walked up to my son and I was like, crop dusters. He goes, that was me. <laughs> I was like, what? At least he's honest. That's so gross. Take it outside. Ugh. So anyways, a great lesson that I learned while we were in the arcade um, that was a little unexpected. So my parents spent a crap ton of money on games and uh, midday, you know, gambling. And then we spent a lot of money and we ended up, you guys, with 217,000 tickets. 
Trace literally could have walked to the glass, you know, where the glass where the fancy stuff is, open it up and pretty much get whatever he wanted. Not the one million ones, you know, not, not, not those, but the ones that are on the lower level glass tiers. And he ended up saying, you know, I really want to split it with my sister. I want to give her something. She got first pick and she picked some knockoff Barbie adventure van thing with a, her first knockoff Barbie. And it was 54,000 tickets. So that still left him with a lot. And this kid, this sweet, sweet boy walking around going, I just don't really need any of this. I was like, Trace, we played for five days so that you could get a prize off the wall. So just go find a prize. But I don't really need it, he would say. I'm like, just find something. So he starts getting stuff for his sister. She needs that ball. And, you know, he just kept going. So he ended up getting some really cool stuff with all of his tickets. And it was really interesting at the very end. We had about 900 tickets left. I was like, what do you want to do? He's like, 900 tickets is nothing. Like, just throw it away. That's what he said. He goes, it won't buy anything here anyways. And I saw this little boy down on the end, you know, where it's the 400 and the 200 and the 100 ticket prizes. And Trace is looking at me and I was like, watch this. And I run over to the little boy. He's with his parents and his, I guess, a sibling of some sort. And I just handed him the 900 tickets. And I said, could you use these? And he looked at it. His eyes lit up like quarters. And he was like, oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. Please. Oh, yes, please. Yes. And his dad was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I said, hey, someone blessed us. When we came here on the very first day with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tickets too. So I hope this helps. And he goes, yes, because there was something he really wanted that he didn't have enough tickets for. And we gave him just enough to get what he wanted. So it was a really cool lesson in the crop dusting arcade <laughs> with my son to show him how the, the beauty of abundance still works, even in places that are gross. <laughs> okay. So that was a fun little thing that happened. So those are my five tips, but I just thought I'd do a little one-off here at the very end and just tell you some funny shit that happened and just funny stuff that we just kind of found because I couldn't really find a category for these. So these are just weird. Um, we were told to go to the lobster house in Cape May. So we drove to Cape May. Naive, you know, this is a hot spot for tourists. You guys, we waited. Oh my gosh, Jeff, was it two hours? Almost, yeah. We waited at least two hours. I at least two hours before we even got sat down. We were there for four and a half hours, which ruined the whole idea of going shopping and going to see a lighthouse and do all the stuff we wanted to do. <laughs> Squash. Remember, you have to be flexible. That was number three, I believe. And so learn your lesson, do your research before you go to these touristy places. I felt bad, but we all held our shit together. No one lost it. And the food was amazing. Lobster house, Kate May. Be prepared to be there all day. That's all I have to say about that. Also, something weird in Cape May. <laughs> I'm not judging the people of Cape May. Most of the people in Cape May are probably tourists. They're probably tourists. And so we went into, you know, the stringlet, beautiful area, and everyone is dressed nice. We all had our sundresses on, and the men are all in their little boat shoes. And it was extremely quiet. I was like, why is it so quiet here? And there was an ice cream shop every 10 stores. I swear to God. I was like, well, here we are, 11 o'clock at night, eating ice cream again. What is up with this? It was a vibe for sure. And like every everybody was like with their families and all their matching outfits. And everyone was dressed up with their bow in their hair, their seersucker dresses. And all the men were wearing salmon shorts. You heard it. The color salmon. Like who does that? Like salmon shorts, it's so like salmon, you know? <laughs> Let me just show you what that was. My husband brought salmon shorts. <laughs> he didn't wear them the whole trip because I was like, ew, salmon shorts. If you're a salmon shorts person, I'm so sorry. It was just everybody had salmon shorts. It was like they all called each other like, hey, what are you wearing? <laughs> Ugh, weird. <laughs> Speaking of what you're wearing, another weird thing we found, teenage girls. This is my son. He's like, why does every single girl have on high rise, really short shorts, a crop top, white socks, and white shoes? 
was like, honey, that's because they don't know who they are. They're still figuring that out. Let's just, you know, forgive them. But if there was a missing person happen and they're like, what is your daughter wearing? <laughs> Uh, good luck finding them because they all look the freaking same. And sometimes when they're in line for rides, you look at them like like little crews of them. From the back, they literally all look the exact same person with different wigs on. I swear. It's so weird. It's like, come on, young people. Be yourself. Be individualistic. Yeah, right. We weren't either. So I digress. But teenage boys, let's go there. Why in God's green earth did they think the mullet is a good idea? It's back. It's back in full throttle. And not only is it back, but like, it's like they don't even try to fix it. It's like party in the front and party in the back. It's just hot mess express. It's like they just stick their hands in it and, go, and they walk out. And that's it. It's a vibe. And I'm like, that looks like a, a needing of a haircut to me, sir. Like my son will not brush his hair. Like he won't do it. And I look at all these kids at the shore. I'm like, shit, they ain't doing it either. They all look like crazy hoodlums. So... Teenagers, weird. Again, I can't get over the ice cream thing. I just, I can't get over it. I don't understand why the hell y'all eat ice cream at midnight when you had all day in the heat when it was actually hot. I digress. I'm just going to just finalize this podcast with some thoughts. Just going to reel it in really quickly because I could literally talk forever. We did it. We survived two weeks with my family. We had an incident. We got over it very quickly. We forgave each other. We apologized and we moved on and it was awesome. It hasn't happened like that every single time we've ever hung out, but it's important that we are doing these things to forward our memories. If we don't do these trips, you guys, we aren't gonna have memories to talk about. Remember, photos lead to stories and stories are your legacy. So making the memories, taking the photos, booking the trip, being patient, being flexible, not sticking to plan, being able to forgive and love your family for who they are, get to know them again. Ask them the questions. And if you don't agree, just say, okay, without a smart ass smirk on your face. Just be okay with who they are and who you are in this time of your life. Remember to take good care of yourself on these trips. Don't just, Bleh. I'm just not gonna take care of myself anymore. I'm gonna let myself go. And the most important thing I could leave you with, a buffer day or a buffer week. You gave me one last week when I got back from my vacation and I'm going to gift you with the knowledge of the buffer day and the buffer week. Some people need a few days, some people need a long time. You have to recover from your vacations. They are hard work. They are hard work. Making memories is not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. Plus, you have to get all the sand out of all the crevices of all the things you brought from that damn beach. <laughs> Don't try to rush back into your life too quickly. Settle into your, your life. Settle into the memories. Make sure you have the photos and the videos and you shared. And make sure to say thank you to the people who came with you. Make sure to hug them, love them, and cherish them while you have them. We're not guaranteed another day. And these trips, while they are hard, and they are costly. They are worth it and they are priceless. So cherish the ones closest to you. Get your butt on vacation or staycation. Get your family in your house. Get yourself in their house. Create boundaries. Create new expectations. Grow up and get to know your family on a deeper level. Wishing you guys all the best in your vacations. Was that a lot or was that a lot? Vacations, family, these are huge topics. I hope this helped you kind of break it down in some practical life experiences because that's all this is, just real life stuff happening, you guys. And to try to apply something new the next time that you go somewhere or you travel and visit your family. I think of it as stretching. Just stretch yourself just a little bit by taking just a few of these tips and making them work for you. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and like what you are hearing or what you are seeing. If you're on YouTube, be sure to click the little bell so that you will get an alert when we have a new podcast up so that you don't miss anything. Any comments, any feedback that we take from you, we take very serious. So please, please, please review and leave some love on our pages. And of course, 
we really want to invite you once again to be on our newsletter. A lot of the things that I talked about today in this podcast, all the way from different kinds of strollers and wagons and hair products and bags and all of these things, I want to actually show you exactly where I got them and link you directly to them. Those of you who are on the newsletter, you are going to get that. So please make sure when you subscribe to the newsletter that you also check your spam folder so we don't get lost in the mix because we want to make sure that we are getting to you every single week with updates, reviews, and of course, links to all these amazing things we talked about today. Thank you again so, so much for taking time on your drive, on your run, while you're cooking, wherever you are behind your computer to just be with me this week. And we hope you'll come back next week so we can finish this conversation. You can better grow up. Grow up, people. <laughs>